Greetings, Will and Watford fans. Omar here, and it's time for the Yawns Friday focus on Watford versus Reading tomorrow at the Vic. And that's the game that Watford will focus on next in the championship. Watford, who are in sixth place coming into this game, taking on third place Reading. Their nickname is the Royals. And of course, we have had the passing of one of the uh, foremost members, the foremost member of the royal family in the United Kingdom, Queen Elizabeth II. Of course, we send our uh, condolences to the family. And the royals will be coming, not those royals, but the royals who wear a blue and white hoops coming to Vicarage Road tomorrow. What will be a very interesting game indeed. Watford looking to keep going at home from strength to strength and continue to play well against a Reading side who have won four of their last five games and whose manager, as well as Watford's manager, are the final four in the race to become the championship manager of the month of August. Now, by the time you see this video, you probably will know who that might be. But as far as we're concerned, we don't know what the outcome will be, of course, of the Watford-Reading match. But we do know that Watford have had a pretty good record against Reading of late. Reading do not play that well away from home. They've been hammered twice away from home against Rotherham and Sheffield United, both 4-0 scorelines. So that is something that Watford should be taking advantage of. And they need to get off to a good start tomorrow against a Reading side who has some very dangerous players in it and some veterans who can also hurt you. Shane Long, who is widely expected, will not be in this game, but I wouldn't underestimate Shane Long making it into that lineup, whether he gets to the bench or starts. Paul Lentz, the manager of Reading, has been saying that Shane Long will miss out. He has a viral situation, perhaps, but I won't underestimate at all the possibility that Shane Long might be on the bench. Now, you remember Shane Long. I remember him because back in 2019, if memory serves me correctly, maybe 2018, he scored the fastest ever goal in Premier League history, just seven and a half seconds. Shane Long scored that goal for Southampton against Watford at Vicarage Road. I remember that game very well indeed. It ended 1-1 with a late goal from Andre Gray back in the day. But tomorrow, Watford have to avoid conceding early. It's been their bugaboo these last few games, especially the last two championship games. Two minutes was the goal conceded by Watford against Rotherham and the game directly before that, four minutes against Middlesbrough at Vicarage Road. Watford will have to start to break that string beginning tomorrow if they have any chance of winning this game. Too many times this season, Watford have conceded first and then have had to come from behind to either get a draw or a win in the case of their game against Middlesbrough, the last time out at the Vic. And Watford will hope to build upon that after, after that game in the first post Vic 100 game at Vicarage Road. As I say, uh, Reading has some players who can hurt you. They've got Junior Hoylett, another veteran who's from Canada, who is very good. Obviously, Jeff Hendrick, who used to play at Burnley and is on loan from Newcastle, a veteran who can hurt you in midfield. And obviously, Lucas Zhao is someone who has scored a number of goals this season and has electrifying pace and is a very good finisher. So Watford will have to be careful and look out for him. The defense must stay switched on from the off tomorrow in the game. No more defensive lapses. The defense has to be spot on against the Reading side who can hurt you on the break and who play the same system that Rob Edwards and Watford do at 3-5-2. As I say, the defense is a bit suspect on their end as well. As I said, they got hammered 4-0 by both Reading and Sheffield United away from home. And so... That's something Watford, again, as I said, must exploit. I think Watford need to get off to a good early start here by scoring a goal or two. If they can get a couple of goals against Reading in the first 20 minutes of this game tomorrow, I think the game will be over for Reading. But Watford have to be concentrated and disciplined defensively. That is the mantra that really I say every week now on these focuses because the defense has been the biggest liability for Watford so far this season. And if um, Ismail Assar happens to make it in time for the game against Reading, not sure whether he would as of the time I'm recording this because there's been no news about it from Vicarage Road and Watford Football Club. But if it is the case that Saar is available to make it back, expect him to start in the game 
and the formation will not change. What I expect will be Jean Pedro and the Kumbayo up front in the two. I expect that what would happen is that Saw would play the number 10 role, uh, kind of more of an attacking midfield role or number 10 role, just in behind the two, sitting in front of the four across midfield, which includes the two wing backs, which would be, of course, Camera and uh, Sema. And then, of course, you'd have the holding midfielders, uh, uh, Kayembe and Chowdhury. And that's what I expect. Espria would be the one, I think, to go to the bench. Rob Edwards has said over recent days that, he said it for a long time now, the 18-year-old Espria, um, that they don't, they doesn't want to really give him so much game time at this level because he needs to be bedded in slowly. But of course, because of the thinness of Watford's squad, that has been very difficult to resist. And so he has been playing a lot of these games. I expect that Espria will be benched. That is only if Saar is able to play the game and start the game against Reading tomorrow. And I expect that if that's the case, Espria will come off the bench. He will be benched. And so he will be watching from the bench and then he'll probably be introduced into the game later on. Keenan Davis, I expect, will get some more game time as well, but I don't think he's going to start this game unless he chooses Rob Edwards to make that change. If Saw, let's say, does not play, he may choose to go up top with both Keenan Davis and Vakun Bayo and then have Jao Pedro playing in that 10 role. That's very possible as well, and I think that that would be a pretty good idea You'd have Saar, obviously, if he's not able to play, he wouldn't be figuring. And then you'd have a Spreer coming in off the bench. There are a couple of possibilities that Rob Edwards could use in that 3-5-2 in the two up front. Whether he goes with Bio and Jao Pedro again, whether he goes with Bio and Keenan Davis, whatever it chooses to be, I have a feeling that Keenan Davis will come off the bench again, depending on the circumstances of the match. It all depends on how they all line up, of course, tomorrow. But I do think that Watford, however they line up in terms of who the personnel are going to be, I expect that Watford, and I think Watford's mission must be to defend properly as a team and help each other. Jao Pedro really was a very good example of this in the game against Rotherham when he ran all the length of the pitch, it seemed, all the way back to recover in defense and then win the ball and then run back up the pitch. I mean, that is what every single one of the Watford players should and must be doing. Um, throughout this season, particularly in the game, of course, against Reading tomorrow. And I think that if Watford score first, and Watford have not scored first in many of these games this season, if Watford can score first, they, I think, will be on their way. And it's important, as I said, that Watford uh, do not concede early on in this game and themselves score early. I think they must score early against Reading. And if they can score in the first five to ten minutes of the game, Watford, I think they can put Reading to bed fairly easily but I think that if Watford score a two or three goals in this game I think they will be able to win the game but if they sputter and stutter against Reading and, and Reading come in there in the first five or six minutes and, and score a goal it could be a very long day at Vicarage Road and it could be trouble for Watford don't underestimate Reading they've got some good players they do play the same system as I said and they are a pain in the neck, and they certainly have a lot of pace. It will be interesting to see who the defensive three will be at the back. I don't think that Cavasilli should be starting these games. I don't expect that you'll see that formation with Cavasilli and Cathcart together. I think what you'll see tomorrow in the starting lineup will be Courtney House. You'll have Sierra Alta back in after missing out against Rotherham, and then you'll have Cathcart on the other side of that. Um, uh, pairing uh, of that of that three. So I think you'll have Courtney House on, on one side on the left, Sierra Alter in the middle, and Kafka on the right. That is who I expect you're going to see in the defensive starting lineup for Watford tomorrow. I fully expect that. And Cavaselli will be most likely on the bench as far as I can see. Uh, Lauza will not be playing this game. He's still a few weeks away from returning. Keenan Davis is likely to be on the bench as I've mentioned. Spreer I think if Saar plays, we'll be definitely on the bench. But if Saar is not playing, I think you'll probably see a spree of starting again. Or maybe the manager might tend or be tempted to put Keenan Davis in and go full full, uh, full bore for this game tomorrow. But we'll see what the lineups look like, and we'll find that out, of course, come match day. So as far as I'm concerned, Watford must get off to a good start, must not concede 
in this game and certainly not concede early on because it's always a mountain to climb to have to come back from behind. Watford have to get their noses out in front here and put the gas and the pedal to the metal and keep going. Do not relent. Do not sit back and invite Reading on after you score one goal. You need to be able to be ruthless. You need to be cutting edge. You need to have that mentality where you are putting teams to the sword and not sitting back after you score a goal. One nil is not enough in most of these games, although we've seen Watford win by that scoreline this season. But it is important that Watford, once they score, if they score first, to keep going. Do not sit back. Keep pushing for the second goal and keep going from there. That is how Watford have to play tomorrow to get past Reading and make sure that they keep it tidy and clean at the back. This has been the Yuans Friday Focus. <laughs>